Hey guys, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual one chapter at a time and today I'm going to be talking about Max for Live and I'll be giving you a quick overview as to kind of what it is and how you can use their devices and begin editing them if you want. I'm not going to be telling you how to make your own devices in Max for Live but if that is something you're interested in please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make some videos on that. If you do not have a license to Max for Live you won't be able to access these things but if you want to learn how to program in Max for Life, but you don't have the money to buy a license at the moment, then I suggest you download Pure Data, which is kind of like an open source version of Max for Life. There are a couple differences, but it's very similar. That's how I started. Okay, so I've got a project here and I've got a few different tracks. And um, if you go into your browser over here on the left, you've got a tab called Max for Live. And again, if you don't have this tab, it's probably because you don't have Max installed and you haven't gotten all your Max for Live packs. So Max for Live is an add-on product that you can put into Ableton and it allows users to extend and customize live by creating instruments, audio effects and MIDI devices such as what you see down here. So this might look a bit weird but it's actually a cool little device and each Max for Live device will tell you what it does. So here I've got an arpeggiator and um, an arpeggiator is a MIDI effect and I found it under Max MIDI effects. There are also Max instruments. You've also got max audio effects, which come after your instruments. So if you do have these, have a look, there's some really cool things inside there. But yeah, these three work just like your usual Ableton audio effects, MIDI effects and instruments. So just talking about installation, if you have installed max for live and you've installed it in a place other than its default location, then you're going to have to point Ableton Live to that new location. So if you go Command, Comma, then you go to File, Folder, then under Max Application over here, you need to just make sure that you're pointing Ableton Live to the right um, file location so that you can access it. So I'm going to go into one of these instruments and show you how you can edit it if you already know how to use Max for Live. And in so doing, I'll also tell you a little bit about what Max for Live is and how you can use it. And I'll show you the browser of Max for Live and so forth. So I'm going to go to this grand piano. I'm just going to bypass this effect for now. This is what it sounded like without the Max for Live arpeggiator. You can see the you can see the notes over here with the arpeggiator. And if I want to edit this Max for Live device, I can go to this edit button over here, which is next to my hot swap preset and my save preset control. And um, just so you know, you can hot swap and you can save Max for Live presets. And when you do, you should save them to your user library. Just try and keep the default location of these um, presets in the same place, because otherwise you're going to have to keep repointing these devices to where their presets are stored. But I'm not going to get into that just yet. So pushing this edit and you'll see it kind of grays out. Uh, if you haven't opened Max for Live, it'll probably pop up. So I'm just going to open my Max for Live window. And you see the device here. So I'm just opening the window by dragging it at the bottom. And at this stage, my Max for Live device is frozen so that you can't edit it and change it. So you need to go and push this little snowflake over here to unfreeze your device and allow for editing. So now you can actually move things around. Uh, I'm just hitting Command Z to put that back in place. And if I actually want to go inside the actual device, so kind of like the back end of it, I need to push this, uh, it looks a bit like a screen or something. It says patching mode. So I push it and now I can actually see the patch and that's what this is called. These are your commands. So if you're used to coding, then you're used to seeing lines, but here things function a little differently. Instead of having separate lines, of code that get compiled in a specific order, you've got these objects that are connected to other objects. And these connections represent the signal flow. Okay, without getting into too much detail, a load bang is something that sends a signal when you open up this device and it essentially starts the signal flow. And so you can visually see what's going on. The signal goes into this object and you can see the orange ones are the signal's going into a device and the yellow ones are where the signal comes out. So here's a yellow node and it's going over here. And at the end of all of this, you're going to have an output and that would be your note out over here. 
Now, if you already a veteran at Max for Life and you want to tweak this arpeggiator, you can actually do so over here and change something. Maybe you want to change the way the arpeggiator works. If you want to learn how to program for Max and you don't want to wait for tutorials from me or you don't want to watch tutorials online, then there's really cool documentation inside Max for Life. Start with the Max tour. It kind of takes you through Max a little bit. Also, these examples are really awesome. A really good way to learn is to reverse engineer existing patches. So don't start with this arpeggiator because it's kind of big and complicated. Max for Live also comes with a bunch of lessons. So I hope this inspires you to maybe just start playing with Max for Live or just edit your patches if you haven't in a while or you're too lazy to write your own. <laughs> it's a really powerful tool to reverse engineer these things. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you and I will see you soon for another tutorial.